Hello everyone and welcome. Now, in this lesson, we'll be talking about how to add a shoot mechanic into your game. I teach on this little YouTube channel called the Game Dev Show. It's all about Unity game development and C Sharp. This shoot mechanic works with any game you want, whether you're making a 2D platformer or a top-down shooter. Now, with all that being said, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the way this works is that basically the weapon points to wherever the cursor is aiming at and when you left click it basically shoots and if you shoot an enemy he gets damaged after a couple of shots he's destroyed from our game you can also go left and right and jump using the first two tutorials i made on this channel which is actually the 2d platformer player controller script how to add a 2d platformer player controller script and how to jump and this is a little scene i just made in a sprite all right so right now i just made a new scene I removed all my scripts and as you can see right here if I start playing uh, I can't interact with the enemy at all nothing really special so I just downloaded a uh, weapon sprite off the internet and I set it as a child to my player object so it can move around with now I'm just gonna add a weapon script to my uh, weapon and I'm just gonna call it weapon script all right so one last thing before I go inside the weapon script I'm just gonna make an empty game object set it as a child to my weapons to my weapon object and I'm gonna set it at the tip of my weapon so this is going to be where the weapon is going to fire uh, its bullets this is going to be the fire pause or the shoot pause and now it's time to code all right so now I'm just gonna go inside my script and inside this script we have two functions the start and update function right here I'm just gonna make a public transform variable and I'm just gonna call it fire pause. I'm gonna create a public game object, call it bullet. This is going to be our bullet. And right here in the update function, I'm gonna make a vector3 variable, call it cursor direction. This is going to be our cursor's direction, wherever our cursor is pointing at. So to get that direction, basically you have to get your end position and then subtract that by your start position so i'm gonna make it as camera dot main dot screen to world point and then open in two brackets and then put in input dot mouse position this little line of code just basically means our mouse's position and then subtract that by a transform dot position so the transform dot position for the normal weapon now let's create a private float let's call it z rotation so Z rotation, this is going to be our angle. This is going to calculate where our mouse exactly is by taking in two values, the X and Y axis. And then by doing that, it will calculate the Z rotation. So the weapon will rotate in the Z axis. Now it will take in two float. Now this little line of code, mathf.etan2, will take in two float values, the Y axis, first of all, and then the X axis, which is kind of a bit which is a bit different because most of the time it first comes the x-axis and then the y-axis but this little line of code is a bit weird I know and then we'll type in mathf.rad to deg so as I said this little line of code will calculate will calculate the z rotations angle and now put in the last line of code which is just to rotate our weapon so put in transform.rotation equals quaternion.euler and then put in a vector3 value which in our case we'll put in 0 on the x, 0 on the y and then z rotation on the z and then we'll put in a public, we'll make a public float, call it offset in my case I didn't put any offset but you could in your case if your weapon is not aiming in the right direction alright so right here just a word of advice in my flip function Whenever I go to the left direction, I want to flip my player. But right here, I set it as minus transform dot local scale. This is one way of doing it. But the other way of doing it is just rotating our player in the y axis 180 degrees so, so that he uh, gets flipped horizontally whenever he goes to the left direction or the right direction, depending on where you are. So just right here, I'm going to change it. So transform dot rotate. Transform the rotate 0 on the X, 180 on the Y, and 0 on the Z. Because if you make it scale, the shoot position, the uh, place that where the projectile will come out from, won't be accurate and it'll glitch sometimes. So I, adv I just advise you to make it flip horizontally. Alright, so right here I'm just gonna make a if input.getMouseButtonDown, 0 index. 
So if we left click, so the zero index is for the left click. I think one is for the right click and minus one is for the middle mouse button. I'm not sure. All right, so I'm currently editing and I think I screwed up. Turns out the left click's index is zero, the right click's index is one, but the middle mouse button's index is actually two and now minus one. Just a quick correction on that. But zero is for the left click. And now we'll make a shoot method. And inside here, we'll be adding the code for shooting our bullet. Now let's create two things, a public transform shoot pause variable, which is the shoot position. This is where the bullet is gonna come out from and the public game object bullet. So this is actually our bullet. And now in the shoot method, we'll spawn in this bullet. And so what's the method for spawning a bullet? That's really easy actually. The second word for spawn is instantiate. If you want to spawn anything, instantiate is the command you'll use. So instantiate, it takes in three things, three values. The first value it'll take is what'll, what do you want it to spawn in? What do you want it to instantiate? The second value is where do you want to spawn it? And the third value is at what rotation? All right, so right here in the weapon script, let's put in a transform variable which is going to be this shoot pause and we want to put in a prefab so let's just put in the bullet right here and let's just edit it maybe make it something like this you can basically just play around and see what fits your needs all right now add in a circle collider 2d maybe play around with the radius a bit i'm just gonna play around with the radius just a bit add in a rigid body 2d I'm going to set the gravity scale to zero so that it doesn't get affected by gravity. And I'm going to make the collision detection continuous because it's going at high speeds and we want it to detect collision at a fast pace. I'm going to freeze the zero rotation and I'm going to make it a prefab. So you can just drag it from the hierarchy and put it inside the assets and it will be a prefab. Now let's just delete this little uh, game object right here and let's go to the uh, bullet prefab. Let's add it right here. Now if we play, this should, now if we play, if we shoot, it shoots, but what happens is that it shoots and it doesn't go anywhere. So that it just, and as we can see right here, it, something's happening. <laughs> so it shoots, but it doesn't go in any re really direction. So it doesn't go at any fi a fast pace. So we can easily fix that. Let's go to the bullet uh, prefab and let's add in a bullet script. All right, so inside the bullet script, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete these two comments right here. And I'm gonna add in a public float speed variable. So this is going to uh, control our speed, the bullet speed. And let's add in a rigid body 2D call it rb inside the start method i'm gonna set the rb dot velocity equals transform dot right so it's going to go in the right direction times speed so it's going to go in the right direction at the at the speed so it's going to go at the right direction so we're just basically telling it we want the velocity to go in the right direction and we want it to stay in the right direction select the rb let's drag in the rigid body let's drag in its rigid body and let's set the speed to something like 20 or 26 and if we just play it let's see what happens circle collider i'm just going to set it as is trigger you can keep it if you want you can keep it uh you can keep it if you want to collide with everything but i'm just going to set it as is trigger so it doesn't collide with everything really and now if we shoot in any direction we want, we can go here, we can go here, you can even go to the left and shoot from the right or from the right, you can shoot from the left, you can go up, you can shoot our player right here. But as we can see, if we shoot anything, it doesn't really happen. Like, not, nothing really happens. So what we want to happen is that whenever we shoot on the ground, for example, or anywhere else, we want the bullet to just destroy itself. We want the bullet to just be gone. But if we shoot our enemy, we want the enemy to take damage and then eventually die. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to add in a on trigger enter to the function. So what this will basically do is that whenever we collide with anything, we want to destroy the bullet. 
So destroy game object. Let's just test this out. Now if we now if we shoot anywhere, if we shoot here or here or anywhere really, the bullet will destroy automatically. All right, so right here, I'm just gonna make a particle effect and set it as whenever the uh, bullet destroys itself or whenever the bullet is destroyed, we want this effect to happen. Now I already here. have a particle we'll prefab, so I'm just particle. gonna add it in the bullet particle uh, variable. Just quickly because made as a great man particle. once said, particles so make, me, make go. me go yes. yes. We can spawn in a particle, so instantiate bullet particle. But even better, we can make a method, and I'm gonna make it destroy part, destroy bullet. And I'm just gonna cut, I'm just gonna cut and paste it here. Now we want the bullet to detect if uh, we're shooting our enemy. If we're shooting our enemy, we want the enemy to uh, slowly decrease the health. So we can just make a enemy script right here. Let's just go to our enemy. I just called him Blue Soldier. I added a box collider 2D and a rigid body 2D to him. And I'm just gonna add an enemy script. I'm gonna add a script and call it enemy. All right, so in the enemy script, I'm just gonna add a public int and I'm gonna call it health. So this is our enemy's health. I'm gonna delete these two start and update methods, and I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna add a public method called void take take damage, and I'm gonna pass in an int value. I'm gonna call it damage. So if we take damage, we want health to minus equals damage now if health is less than or equals zero we want our enemy to just die so I'm just gonna make a little so right here I'm just gonna make a method called die and I'm gonna add it so void die now what we want to happen when the enemy dies is that we want to instantiate a death effect. Now what you could do is you could just destroy this game object. But I'm just gonna add a particle effect because particle effects are juicy. Alright so we made a method called take damage but now we want to call it in the bullet script if we collide with our enemy. So now in the on trigger enter 2d method let's just make an if statement if we collide with our enemy so quickly let's just make a variable and store it inside enemy so the enemy script equals enemy equals collision dot get component enemy script and then after typing all of that if enemy does not equal null so if enemy is actually there if there is an enemy we want to destroy that specific enemy so we'll just call the enemy script and put in the take damage variable by doing that, he'll actually take damage, and then after a couple of hits, he'll actually get destroyed from the game. Now, let's input how many da how much damage we want the enemy to take in for each bullet. You can either hard code it in, or you can make a public int variable called damage, and then set damage in the inspector. Okay, so now let's just set uh, damage in the inspector, how much you want the bullet to damage our enemy. This is the amount that is going to be subtracted from our uh, enemy's health. So take that into mind. Death effect. I'm just going to add a particle effect because you really can't go wrong with particles. And then set the health of our enemy. And then click on play. And as we can see, there is one problem. There is one last problem we have to fix. It's the fact that we can keep on spamming our uh, shoot button. And it won't stop us. So now we'll be just fixing this problem. Let's go to our weapon script and create a private float variable. The time between shots. And let's create a public float start time between shots. Now let's go to our if statement. Let's create a new if statement. And let's set if time between shots is less than or equal to zero. 
let's put the if statement if input or game else button down inside the uh, time between shots if statement and then let's set time between shots equals start time between shots now in the else statement let's set time between shots minus equals time dot delta time so it slowly decreases so just basically think about it this way it basically just takes into account time and decreases itself a unit every second passes by so by doing this uh, a timer will happen every time we will shoot a timer is gonna start basically and now let's go back to unity let's go to our weapon game object let's search for our weapon script and we'll see a start time between shots float variable. You can set this variable to whatever you want. Basically, I'm just going to set it to 0.3. So every time I shoot, uh, the game will count down to 0.3 seconds. And then after the 0.3 seconds are finished, I can shoot again. You can basically just play around with this. Make more weapons if you want to play. Now we shouldn't spam. So now if we play, we can't spam. So it's actually a reasonable amount. You can either make it f more or less if you want. So now if we shoot, he explodes. Now there's one last effect I want to add for our player. You can skip this effect if you want because uh, really all the essentials are inside the game. But one last effect is... We want after we shoot him two times, we want him to bleed. So basically just a bleed sprite. Uh, right here let's just go back to the script the enemy script and let's set an if statement so if health is less than or equals 40 so after about two shots we want to we want to uh, bleed so we want the enemy to bleed so how we can do this is that we can call the public Sprite, we can call the sprite renderer and change the sprite from there. So sprite renderer, let's call it rent. And we can call in a public sprite variable. Let's call it a character hurt. So now right here, rent dot sprite right equals character equals sorry uh, character hurts and now let's just save let's just delete this comment and let's go back so now if we just play okay so back here we'll just go to the uh, enemy and let's add in a character hurt sprite so right here I just have a character hurt sprite right here where it's blue and I'm just gonna add it in right here and also we'll add in the sprite render so we'll just drag it and drop it come on go come on drag it into this variable so now if we play we shoot him one time nothing happens we shoot him a second time he starts bleeding we shoot him the third time he explodes all right and a little R to restart again. Very cool. Okay, so basically just to recap, we added three scripts in our game. So this is just one tutorial and I taught you how to add three scripts. One is for rotating the gun, one is for shooting the gun, the, the bullet, and one is for damaging the enemy. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and don't forget to comment down any future recommendations for videos. Thank you for watching this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.